Hey everyone, it's Mike Andes, LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. I'm here at the Augusta Lawn Care Shop today. I wanted to show you around our trailerless setup. So in our market, we do have to bag clippings. So a few things right off the bat that might be a little bit different than yours. If you don't have to bag clippings, I recommend getting the ramp uh, that goes into the back of the truck. So there's the ramp rack, there's the mow and go systems. Those are all, you can just search those online. You'll find what I'm talking about. But in that scenario, you actually take the tailgate off and then a whole dovetail system ramp goes into the back of the truck and you put, put like a zero turn in there. The problem with us is we got to fill this up with clippings. And so in our market, it's very standard that everyone bags clippings. And so that whole back of the bed, we always try to get these eight foot beds because we do have a lot of clippings. Uh, and so we have to leave that open. But if you don't bag clippings, I would recommend getting a rack or sorry, a ramp instead of a, a rack. So let me start off in the back of the truck. We'll walk you through the whole thing, kind of show you the efficiencies that are built in and what we kind of do to, to standardize our trailerless setups here at Augusta Lawn Care. So first of all, this rack, this ramp here is from trailerracks.com. Um, and we've played with a lot of different types of racks and still not, not found anything that's super ideal or perfect necessarily. Um, the reason for that is because it's very hard to find what's called a cargo carrier, which is actually what the name of these uh, racks are called as cargo carriers. It's hard to find one that's going to fit a 30 inch mower. So we have other racks that we've used that we really like for 21 inch mowers. But when you start getting wider than 29 inches, it's really difficult to find one that we are totally in love with stock. So right now we modify these slightly. Uh, and so this is the 30X uh, Xmark mower with the Kohler engine. And so if you have a 30 inch mower from Xmark, you might have the Kawasaki, uh, which is, we actually usually prefer the Kawasaki's or we, that's what we've been used to. But the Kohler engines, they kind of up the power a bit and we need that in our market simply due to the fact that we get a lot of wet clippings and bagging issues if we don't have enough power. And same thing, like if you got, if you got a wet day, long grass on a hill, going up a hill, uh, the old Kawasaki's would leave like a trail of clipping sometimes uh, in between the two blades. So, because if you walk around here, I can show you underneath on these mowers, you actually got two blades here. And so, if it's if they're not uh, if it's not powerful enough the engine, basically you'd see like a, a strip of clippings in here. So last year, this is brand new from Xmark. Uh, they they uh, came out with the Kohler engine. It's a little bit stronger, a little more powerful. A couple things we like about it is the side discharge unit. So with a typical 21 inch mower, uh, like a Honda, which we used to use a lot of for the 21 inch mowers or even the Xmark 21s, if we didn't bag, you had to literally just take the bag off and like the clippings would be falling at your feet and didn't like disperse it very well across the lawn because you're walking through the clippings. What's nice about this one is if you want to, uh, you know, not bag clippings, you can simply pop this thing off. Let's see here. Basically just pull us out, pops right off. And so then it's just a side discharge. And because of the two blades, I find that it really does a nice job of mulching, like cutting up those clippings to be very fine. So we've really liked it so far. A couple things that we, we have had some issues with is just the, the mechanisms up top here, because now that we are using this as the primary mower on the setup, you got little bolts and little wires. These things are not, you know, the best. We're still trying to figure out you know, how to make these a little more systematized in terms of training all the crew how to fix these things in the field. So if something like this breaks or a bolt pops off or you know, a spring gets loose, that they can quickly fix it and not have any downtime. So we're still working on that, but right now we've changed all our trailer setups to be completely 30X. Uh, and we've seen about a 30% efficiency when they're mowing uh, on lawns that are less than about 5,000 square feet. Above 5,000 square feet, it does take longer with this setup, 100%. Uh, so we have to account for that in our pricing and making sure that they have the correct amount of budget hours on the job because they have this equipment. All right, so let's move around. Actually, I'll, let me show you the, the ramp here, the rack in the back. So this basically just comes straight down. It's an aluminum rack, so it's very lightweight. And the downside of that is it's easier to bend or like it's not the most rigid metal. But the nice thing and the reason that we got the aluminum is because it's really, really light to move and take off of the two inch hitch receiver. So if we ever wanted to pull a dump trailer, uh, we could just pop this off very easy, one person and you know hook it up to a trailer instead of having to, we have, we've tried other steel 
uh, racks and the problem is it takes two people they're like three to four hundred pounds it's quite an adventure just trying to put it on and off and so with these it's very very light this is probably all of you know 10 pounds uh, puts up in place locks and ready to go when they head out on the road we have ratchet straps that we basically tie one through here across the front one through the back to modify this rack because like I said it's very difficult to find a rack that's wider than 30 inches and the reason the difficult is it's not necessarily like the, even though there's a 30x and 30 inches wide it's actually more like 31 and a half 32 inches because you got the actual deck right and so the problem is finding a uh, a rack that actually is going to fit so what we do is we actually cut this out so that this is like a notch where the deck can sit in and so it does a couple things number one it allows the mower to, to be on the rack because otherwise it's about a half inch too thin too uh, narrow but it also kind of acts as a locking mechanism because the decks in here they can't roll around very much in addition to the extra straps that we got on it so uh, that's what we're working with right now. Down the road, we'll probably have to custom fab something because we would like it something a little more rigid, a little more sturdy and about two inches wider. And because we kind of cut this and, and kind of compromise this, the structure, underneath here, we actually had to put a, a piece of metal to reinforce this edge so it doesn't start bending. Because it is aluminum, it isn't super rigid. So underneath here, we have to do a bracket that kind of reinforces the floor of that rack. All right, so let's move around here to the side. All our trailer racks are from trailerracks.com, Green Touch. And if you're a franchisee, you know that we have a coupon code for 15% off from them. Um, and so they, they've really uh, been a brand ambassador for Augusta and we appreciate that. So all of these lock in place. And basically this whole setup that you're seeing right now in terms of the, the racking systems, uh, you're looking at about $1,000 just on average, depending on your shipping, where you're at in the country but when you're putting this on a back of a truck I really recommend that you do have an eight foot bed because you're gonna get so much more usage out of the rack if it's only six feet you really can only put like a couple attachments on and it just becomes less versatile so we really like to use all of our racking systems on eight foot beds simply due to the fact that we can fit everything we need on it so this is the uh, the new version 3 system at trailerracks.com and all of its locks so you got your key you can just pop it in here and it's supposed to work let's see here there you go all right so once that's done then you just have to move this which unlocks it and then you can take the trimmer out I'm somewhat height challenged so it's a little difficult for me to sometimes unlock the top part but for most people it's not that difficult then you just slide it in you go here Locks in place and it's not going anywhere. Sometimes when, when you got these, these racks on, it seems like they rattle around a little bit, but like they are not going anywhere. Um, they're bolted from the inside of the, of the bed. And the first time you put these together, honestly, it's gonna be really frustrating. You're gonna spend a few hours, a lot of finagling. We've never had a setup where we don't have to do a little bit of modification in terms of getting some different bolts or just playing around with stuff. So the first one's gonna be a little frustrating. Now they have it down to a science. They can put the whole thing together in like 30 minutes to an hour probably. But the first one's gonna take you a little extra time. Uh, but what you gotta do on trailerracks.com if you go there, you gotta buy this bed rail system for everything to latch onto. Unless you're gonna actually drill holes into the bed rail of the truck. And so I wouldn't recommend doing that because if you ever change your mind on what you want that truck to be used for, or if you wanna sell it down the road, um, then you got holes in the bed rails, which isn't that great. So you get these bad boys, they attach onto here, and then you can put whatever you want, move it in and out, move them from side to side. If you get different equipment, you can move them and not have to worry about holes in the bed of uh, the bed rail of the truck. So that's the trimmers. We use the, I think it's called FS 11, 111s. I don't even know what we use, let's see. I think, yeah, these are, yeah, FS 111s. That's what we use. We used to use the ones that are slightly larger. I think they're the 130s. Uh, but they're just a little bit heavier and a little more fatiguing on the guys. And these I think are about 20 bucks cheaper too. So that's what we use. Uh, you'll notice here on the top, we do use the combi system that Steel has so we can have the edger attachment. And we found that the star heads work better than the, st the rectangular heads uh, in terms of creating a nice defined edge uh, for uh, along concrete and things. So we use the star bit, that's what we call it. Uh, and then we, this is just really just an attachment 
to the combi system because this guy right here, we could take off the edger and just take a hedger attachment or a chainsaw attachment or a uh, rototiller attachment and just pop it onto here. So if this truck is going out for mowing, but they also have to trim a couple bushes at a property, they just literally need to throw in the attachment for the combi system for the hedger attachment. So, and then they get the whole job done, throw the clippings in the back of the truck. Having the truck open in the back, the bed, also allows us to use for landscaping jobs, cleanups, uh, mulch installations. You can still put two yards of mulch over these racks and fill up the bed of the truck. Uh, as well as you can put wheelbarrows in the back and the whole bit. So that's why like, we like to be able to take that ramp rack on the back off, or sorry, that rack, simply due to the fact that we can then open up the tailgate and throw all of our uh, tools, whether it be hardscaping, landscaping, into this truck and still could be used outside of just mowing. Like if we have, a, the, the, the one downside of having a ramp is if you keep your zero turns and everything on here, it kind of is designated as that unless you have to take it on and off every day. So we want to eliminate that as much as possible. We leave these on all the time. The only thing we ever take off this whole setup is the mower. And what, that's kind of leading to the next thing here on these, what's nice about this uh, ramp is you can open the bed of the truck and it's still have access to it. We had some other ones that the ramp was closer and we kind of liked it at first because it just looked a little bit more sturdy with, it, with the whole rack being closer. But then you can open this up and you couldn't have access. Like in here, I can leave this on and still get a wheelbarrow or get materials or whatever I need out of the bed of the truck, which is nice. Same thing here with the uh, version three of the blower rack. These are steel uh, 600 models. Uh, and again, all of these are labeled in terms of which trucks they're on, uh, the blowers and trimmers, etc. All right, walk around front. We label all of our trucks, by the way, just the pickup number on the front. Uh, these are all painted yellow, and then we put the decals on. And the painting, depending on your mark, is gonna cost, we've seen anywhere from $600 to $2,000. Really gonna depend on your market. Uh, down in, even in Texas, we have one franchisee that it was like $2,500 they wanted at Mako, and then another guy it was like $600, $700 to get the whole thing painted. We pay about $1,000 per truck 1100 depending on the size of the truck uh, to get them painted yellow. And then we pay another $500 to get all the decals installed. So that includes printing them and installing them. Uh, and so that is what you see here. And it has the yellow, the brown, and the green kind of our colors around Max, our mascot. All right, so here, these are the new fuel cages that they got over at Green Touch. And these are great because they have a locking system. They just pull this down pop this off the top you can access your gas cans and then as always nice and easy to be able to lock this thing up at night now it's locked and ready to go you can't get into this thing uh, if someone really wanted to get these off like they could they'd have to cut these bolts or take off these um, we've never had a problem yet uh, as long as you have some good motion detectors and lights around your shop usually you're gonna be okay so fuel cages there we have the five gallon and the two and a half gallon uh, for the five gallon we use straight gasoline and then for the two and a half uh, gallon ones we have the uh, two cycle engine oil and we started using these a couple years ago this model of a gas can we used to use sure can and it was okay the problem with it was a lot of dripping uh, we had some issues with them we just never really liked them as much as we do with these these are great because they're uh, spring-loaded here so if you tip them over nothing happens then if I take this and I push the button there it comes out immediately uh, we really like these since we got them we switch everything over from our old gas cans to these and a lot of times what happens is you know you get busy you're out in the middle of a job you're at a gas station you're like oh I just need to pick up a, a gas can you know pick up like a cheap old $10 gas can um, that's just like super old that thing will come back to bite you. Get, invest in some of these. They cost like $25. They are a little more expensive, but in the long run, it's gonna save you a lot of time. All right, so let's move on back to the sprayer now. Uh, we use the steel sprayers. There are some really cool ones that I've seen that are electric that I'm interested in getting, but they are about two and a half times the cost of one of these bad boys. So for now, we're sticking with them. Uh, we've had some issues in the past with the pumping system, like just things getting bent sometimes. And partly of the fact that uh, when you are on a trailer with a setup like this, you don't, this is the last thing you want happening. And so sometimes what happens is the crew will just throw this back behind, which is okay until you throw a gas can on it or a, uh, a bin of debris or it gets buried in grass things. 
And so we've had some problems with that. Uh, we'll have to figure out some way of getting that to be, uh, like, technically, you should be able to put this handle around here and clip it here. But then, again, like if it just slips through, goes over a bump or something, and ends up down here, that's the last thing we want. So, um, we might have to modify something there, but we have seen some really cool, there's some really cool stuff. Even at TrailerRacks.com, they got a battery operated uh, sprayers that don't require you to have to be pumping all the time, which is not a huge nuisance because on this type of a setup, without being at a landscaping job, this is gonna be small amounts of, of spraying. It's not like you're spraying a whole field. You're just gonna be spraying like a spot spray here and there and gravel or something like that. All right, so this is another attachment that, again, you can just bolt right onto the side of the bed rail, and that is for the hand tools. So I'll hop up here in the back of the truck. But again, we got just kind of the standard hand tool that you're gonna need out on a mowing route if you're doing some weeds or other general maintenance at a property, hard rake, shovel, soft rake. And again, you can put other t different types of attachments on here if you like. Uh, there's also an attachment that if you wanted to, you could bend this out at a 45 degree angle. So these are all tilted backwards. Uh, we've never had to invest in that yet, but that's kind of the setup from there. So hopefully you learned something. Again, the big difference that you might have from us is that you don't need a bag clippings. If you don't need a bag clippings, it's a really good investment to spend $1,200, as low as $1,200 up to $3,000 depending on which system you go with. But the mow and go system and then the ramp rack are two different models I would recommend if you actually needed to get a zero turn. Because what's cool is you can get, if you have a, a ramp, you can get a good 36 or a 48 inch zero turn in between your wheel wells especially if you don't have to bag, right? You don't have a bag. Like for us, even if we were to use this as a ramp uh, and put a ramp on here, we'd have a bagging system on the side of our zero turn and that adds like another 12 inches. So like we would hardly be able to get anything of size in the back of this thing uh, because we do need to have a bagger on it. So if you don't have to have this rack in the back and you're able to get a ramp instead, all the best, you know, that's, that's probably the best route to go. And honestly, if we didn't have to bag clippings, that's what we'd be doing. Uh, the bottom line is, Adding, an, adding a big trailer on the back of your truck reduces your fuel economy. It's a lot of maintenance on that enclosed trailer uh, in terms of brakes and tires. And then if you have an enclosed trailer with the cords that come down on the back doors that come down, those break all the time. Tail lights get broken. Um, uh, the, the sheet metal on those enclosed trailers is so thin, they get beat up like crazy. Uh, lots of maintenance, lots of damages on those. It's harder to, the biggest thing is really it's harder to train people. Taking someone off the street, most anyone can drive this setup because it's literally just a truck with a few feet on the back that's added. Whereas a trailer, you gotta learn how to back up, you got tight spaces, they gotta be more intuitive in terms of traffic and if they're blocking a driveway, uh, they're easier to jackknife. There's just a whole bunch of more maintenance involved with an enclosed trailer uh, or even a trailer in general. So really encourage you to use this if you have smaller properties and if you have larger properties and you don't need a bag, having a ramp that goes in the back, you can get a 48 inch mower, a zero from the back of that thing and not need the big, the, the, the big trailer. I'd rather you spend the extra $6,000 on marketing or $5,000 on marketing instead of buying an enclosed trailer or some big setup where then you gotta feel obligated to fill it up with big mowers and all the rest of it. So that's my two cents, just my takeaway. Hopefully uh, something that was said that was helpful. This is our uh, trailerless setup. Again, in our market, we have to bag clippings, but I hope something was helpful for you today. Thanks so much. Make sure you check out landscapebusinesscourse.com and I'll see you next time.